you to look to your neighbor and ask them, are you oily? I'm not talking about oily face or oily hair. Tell them, are you oily this morning? Now go ahead and be seated. We have quite a lot of reading this morning. <laughs> we love the word. Uh, we're going to open up to Matthew 25, 1 through 13. And so if you could open your word right where you're at. And we'll go ahead and start and read together. I'm going to go ahead and read, and it should be on the screens. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. It says, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, thoughtless, silly, and careless. And five were wise, far-sighted, practical, and sensible. For when the foolish took their lamps, they did not take any extra oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil along with their lamps. Now while the bridegroom was delayed, they all began to nod off and they fell asleep. But at midnight there was a shout, look, the bridegroom is coming, go to meet him. Then all the virgins got up and put their own lamps in order. But the foolish virgin said to the wise, give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, otherwise there will not be enough for us and for you too. Go instead to the dealers and buy oil for yourself. But while they were going away to buy oil, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast and the door was shut and locked. Later, the others also came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he replied, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, I do not know you. We have no relationship. Therefore, be on alert. Be prepared. Be ready. For you do not know the day nor the hour when the Son of Man will come. Right where you're at, if we could bow our heads. God, we come before you this morning, Lord, and we already feel your presence and your spirit in this place with us, God. And Lord, we know, Father, that you have us here on this special morning to see miracles, signs, and wonders, my God. So, Father, in this moment, open our hearts. Let our hearts be ready for your word. Let our hearts be ready for all that you have to do, God. Move me aside this morning. Let me be your mouthpiece. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Now, this morning, we have to make one thing clear, right? We're in the end times. How many know that Jesus is coming back soon? How many know Jesus is coming back soon? In 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5, it talks about how in the last days, there will be perilous times. How men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, disobedient to parents, unthankful, right, without self-control. It says many things, but it says having a form of godliness but denying its power. And we see this unfolding right before our very eyes. In this generation, all these qualities in 2 Timothy 3, we see. And in this parable, it talks about the oil. This morning, my, the title of my message is Oil Check. Because this morning, we're going to take an oil check. Are we oily for the Lord? The oil in this parable is an emblem for the Holy Spirit. The oil represents the Holy Spirit for many reasons. The oil heals, right? The Spirit of God brings healing and restoration. Oil lights when it is burned in a lamp. Where the Spirit of God is, there is light. Oil warms when it's used for fuel as a flame. Where the Spirit of God is, there is warmth and comfort. Oil adorns, applied as perfume. The Holy Spirit adorns us and makes us more pleasant to be around. And this is my favorite, oil polishes. When used to shine metal, the Holy Spirit smooths out our rough edges, right? But without oil, without the Holy Spirit, no one is ready for the return of Jesus. And this morning, we're talking about the power of a praying mom. But without the oil, without the Holy Spirit, there is no power flowing through our lives. So I pose the question to you this morning. Do we have oil in our lamps this morning? Are we filled with the Holy Spirit? Are we ready for the moment of Christ's return? Are we ready to be all that God has called us to be? 
Are we so filled that when that family member calls us in that moment, that we're ready to minister, that we're ready to lay hands? We're all here this morning because we know someone who had the oil. We know someone who came into our lives and had the power of the Holy Spirit upon them, who laid hands on us, who told us about the Lord. We're all here because of someone who carried oil with them. I don't know about you, but I want to be a woman who has oil. I want to be a woman, I want to be a mother who carries the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit wherever I go, who stores her oil, who keeps watch for the divine appointment where the power of the Lord wants to move in and through her life. And if we're going to see the power of God move through our lives in these end times, we must first get our own oil. Tell your neighbor, get your own oil. Right here in Matthew 25, 7, we see that there were five virgins who had the extra oil, right? And the five, that their oil ran out. And when the five foolish virgins asked for their oil, the five wise virgins told them, go get your own. The foolish virgins weren't ready for the return of the bridegroom. The Bible reads that they were thoughtless, silly, and careless. I wonder, were they distracted? Did they not understand the magnitude of this opportunity, of this moment? You and I must understand that we're in a critical moment. Jesus is coming back, and we cannot afford to be caught on do not disturb. We can't afford to be caught with no oil. But you and I, we've got to stay filled. I got to break it to you, and this is something that I've ha- I had to realize. I'm a church kid. I grew up in this house. I got to break it to you that we cannot ride on the coattail of someone else's oil. Someone else's relationship with the Holy Spirit is not going to get you into heaven, right? Those five foolish virgins came to that place where they knocked on that door, and they say, let me in, let me in. But he said, I have no relationship with you. I want to let you know you cannot ride on the coattails of someone else's oil, but you need your own oil. You got to be ready that when the master come back for us, we're ready to see him. We're ready to see him. All ten virgins were in the same position. But five got got access to the feast and five were locked out. The bridegroom told those foolish ones, I assure you, I say to you, I do not know you. We have no relationship. It's great that our family comes to church. It's great that our loved ones pray for us, but they cannot get us into heaven. We've got to have our own relationship. We've got to have our own oil. The second thing is that Store your oil. Store your oil. In Matthew 25, 4, we see that the wise virgins didn't just bring the oil in their lamps, but they had that extra oil. Because why? They didn't know how long they'd be waiting for the bridegroom. And we got to be wise men and women who don't just live on just enough, but store up their oil. It's not enough to live on that just enough. We must not put limits on the bridegroom for when it will be the moment to see him. We will not put put limits on when he's going to come back for us. Men and women who trust God and say, I don't know how long it's going to be to see my husband saved. I don't know how long it's going to be to see my child saved. I'm not sure how long it's going to take to see my healing. But all I know is I got to store my oil. I got to keep coming to the feet of Jesus. I got to stay filled. Because when that moment arrives, when I see that child, when I see that husband, that I'll be filled enough to lay hands on them, to see them delivered, to see salvation, to see breakthrough. That when I see that sick love, one I'm able to lay hands on them and know that I'm filled with the power of the Holy Spirit to see transformation in their lives we've got to have the Holy Spirit running through our lives we got to have that oil that's running over we've got to stay filled we got to keep our lamp lit the last thing is we must maximize the moment The five foolish virgins put a time limit on the return of the bridegroom. Once their oil ran out, their opportunity ran out. 
The final verse says, therefore, be on alert. Be prepared. Be ready. Because you do not know the day or the hour when the Son of Man will come. We don't know when God is going to bring forth that salvation. We don't know when God is going to bring that healing or that miracle. But he tells us, keep watch and be prepared. That is our assignment, that we would be prepared. And these foolish virgins were not prepared. And because they were not prepared with that extra oil, because they didn't stay filled, because they didn't have the Holy Spirit running consistently through their lives, then they missed that moment. And I know for me, we, you all know, a lot of you, that we've been through different seasons of hardship, right? My youngest brother passed away. My sister was diagnosed with leukemia. And she's actually healed, sitting on stage, singing of the miracle working power of God today. But I could remember moments where I had a mother that in the face of discouragement, in the face of trial, in the face of opposition, she fought for the oil in her life. She fought to stay filled with the Holy Spirit despite the trial in her way, despite what the doctors were saying, despite what people were saying. She said, no, I'm going to fight that I would have a fresh oil, that the Holy Spirit would be running through my life. And I look back, what if I had a mother who let her oil run out? What if that trial came about? What if the sickness came and she had no more oil? Where would we be? Would I be bitter? Would I be saved? But because I had a mother who stored her oil and said, I need oil for myself, but I need oil for my daughters. I need oil for my family because I need to be running over that the Holy Spirit is flowing through my life. That whoever encounter me, who whatever trial come my way, I know what to do. I know that the Holy Spirit is within me. Mama, you got to stay filled. You've got little eyes looking at you. I know me, I'm looking at my mama. What is my mama going to do? You got little eyes looking at you. Are you going to react or are you going to respond? God has called you to respond. Respond in faith. Respond by digging your well. Respond by storing your oil. Don't just live on just enough. I want to encourage you this morning. In the midst of your battle, do a surprise attack on the enemy. When the enemy expects you to shrink back, step up. When the enemy expects you to stop praying, pray harder. Be more persistent. When the enemy tries to steal your worship, lift those hands higher. Maximize your moment. Don't miss the moment. I want you to know that this morning is your moment where God is saying, I want to fill you with the fresh oil. I want to fill you with the Holy Spirit that you wouldn't feel like you're alone. You wouldn't feel like you're on your own. But I have the Holy Spirit to be everything that you need this morning. I got to read this scripture to you in closing. Because it tells us what the Holy Spirit is to us. John 14, 25. I have told you these things while I'm still with you. But the helper, the comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, to represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach you all these things. He will help you remember everything that I have told you. We got to keep pressing forward as we serve God, knowing that the Holy Spirit is with us. Staying close to the Holy Spirit, allowing him to be that advocate, to be that comforter, to be that strength in our life. Our sons and daughters are falling in depression, addictions running rampant. The enemy is out to kill our generation. You know it. I know it, and you and I cannot afford to walk powerless. We can't afford to shrink back in this moment. But God is saying, I want to fill you again and again and again until you're overflowing so that we could see people saved and transformed by the power of God. As you stand, today is your day, fresh and anew. You know what I believe? I believe God is going to create divine appointments. That you're going to start having suddenly moments, miracle moments with your children, miracle moments with your husband, miracle moments 
with that healing and that miracle. And God is going to begin to use you. As we're filled with that oil, God is going to use you and I. So right where you're at, let's just bow our head and close our eyes. Oh, Father, we thank you here this morning, God. We thank you that you see us, Lord. That you're our Roy, the God who sees us. Whatever we're believing for, God. If it's that miracle. If it's that breakthrough. If it's that salvation of that child that's wayward. Father, we bring it to your feet. Because, God, we know that you not only want to fill the believer, but you want to fill the sinner. And, God, that you want to fill us with the oil that is your Holy Spirit. So we would be ready for your return, oh, God. Father, we ask, God, that you would continue to move this morning. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. We're getting ready for... We're not done, tired neighbor, we're not done. God has so much more this morning, and I want you to help me welcome my warrior mama, our mama of the house, Sister Dre.